Hello, mis yalitos, and welcome back. Guess who's here? Yes, I... As I mentioned in the last stream, I was going to switch over to Vineon, and yeah, that was able to help me get my avatar back and moving. I'm still not familiar with it at all. I literally just downloaded it like two hours ago. So I'm, I'm still getting used to the interface. I found a tutorial vid that will show you how you can integrate it into the various streaming platforms so you can, uh, you know, uh, use channel points to be able to affect the stream and whatnot. I'm kind of curious how that works with YouTube. I guess it just works on commands with YouTube as opposed to channel points. But I haven't set any of that stuff up. Uh, I also am slowly moving over to Rainmaker, which is a little... It, it seems similar to, to stream elements, but it, it's just different enough for me to be like, okay, I can't just just like slap a bunch of things together uh i'll actually have to see how this works because uh one thing i noticed when i was trying to just create a blank just for alerts is that uh wow it, it makes things very big and the cropping system is a little confusing and by confusing I mean i didn't figure it out in a couple of seconds so i was like all right i'll i'll figure out the logistics of this later Hello, Bellhound. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming. The end of 999 and the beginning of 1000. Oh. If Kudu thought the, the characters in this one was bad, wait till she sees the one in that one. Really, complete blank slates. Utter zeros might as well be. But yeah, I'm I'm really look liking the look of Vineon. It looks very promising. Uh, I had always intended to go to it, but it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, okay, there's so much that needs to be changed since before that was first. Ah, oh, Streamlabs is doing shitty things. Ah, oh, Stream Elements is doing shitty things. So I need to redo everything. Ah, oh, Stream now I need to go over to Rainmaker, and it's like, oh god, it feels like every time. I finally get my setup made. Something happens. But hopefully we'll be here for at least a little. Hopefully I can just maybe set aside a day to focus only on, or maybe even like, yeah, yeah, day just to focus on getting everything back to where it was, improve some stuff. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to get some new outfits. But unfortunately, I think when this model was made, I saw them making them and it seemed like most of the outfit was actually just sort of colored onto the base. So it's not really clothing, like a separate thing. So yeah, I'd have to see how that is. Some of the, some of the items were also made on Blender. So I'd have to see how I could work with maybe replacing some of that or what I would need to do. But yeah, it'd be nice. Maybe, maybe see if there's a way to change hairstyles as well. <sighs> but it's so nice to be back to this. So, so nice. And thank you all so much for always being so helpful, do helping me do test streams and waiting, still, still coming by on the streams. Oh no! What a terrible thing! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I won't tell anyone if you won't. <laughs> you know what, maybe, maybe I can get a swimsuit from that lovely commission that looks, that looks the same as that lovely commission. Then it's technically something, right? I was also doing a little bit of... Yeah, I'm just gonna... You're gonna you're gonna see behind the curtain a little. So I was doing... I saw that this had, uh... Hand experimentation. 
And I tested it out a little, and it's... It's not the best, but I was able to get it to wave a little. Uh, do I want to show? Whatever. Let's see. So if I center myself and put my hand up... Hi, everyone! <laughs> Look, it just immediately drops. <laughs> Like, I gotta get to a very specific... Yeah. I knew I could trust you. But no one else. So hopefully no one else has joined us yet. It's not bad. It's not too bad. Especially since I usually have my hands down, down like here. I don't, I don't think there's too big a risk of uh, setting it off. But if I'm like trying to push my hair back, <laughs> it just goes up like that. Alrighty. Well, I do not have too much to report today, so let's go ahead and get started. See if we can finish this up tonight without having to stay up too much longer. move you here and then Snake! Hey, he's alive after all. <laughs> and he's wearing some very strange looking cl robes. Looks like he was part of some satanic ritual or something. Why? Ah, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? He's just been having a nice little nap all this time. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Should we tell him? How will we break it to him? I vote that Seven not be the one, considering he, uh... Sucks at... Considering the feelings of others after sending Clover to just discover what she would assume to be her brother's body without any warning. Have I been sufficiently caught up? Still doesn't explain why you were trapped in here. We've still got no clue about Zero's true identity, let alone why the hell he's doing all this. Why did he put Guy X in Snake's clothes? Is all this stuff somehow related to that Nordery game that was played nine years ago? Hmm. Hey, Snake, do you know anything? Um, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. Oh, come on, just tell us if you know. I don't know what to tell you. How can I know something I don't? This is bad. We're running out of time. We need to go after Ace. I mean, I think... I think he's probably now? long gone by now. With Lotus. The three of us can't make a digital route of nine. Yeah, we just get five. We're stuck here, then. Oh, hey. I just remembered something. What? What is it? I, uh... I found something earlier. What did you find? This. Zero. 
Zero's bracelet. What did you say? Are you saying that Seven has the number Zero bracelet? Yeah. Where did you get that? Clover gave it to me. She did? Yeah. How did she come by it? Well, she found it. See, on the other side of door one, A deck, a captain's quarters. She asked me to hold on to it because it was too big and bulky for her to be moving around. He's lying. Oh, well. Looks like he is trying some discretion now. He even told us earlier. I haven't actually looked at it yet. We don't want to disturb the crime scene, you know. Basic stuff. Well, I did borrow one of them. He probably said that so Snake doesn't find out about Clover. Alright, Junpei. It's been nice knowing you. Wait, what? Come on, man. I'm just kidding. <sighs> Still, just in case, I want to make sure the Zero Bracelet gets picked up by the Red. Snake, give me a hand, all right? Huh? Why isn't it opening? Um, well, the third asterisk lit up, so... It must have registered the Zero Bracelet. Maybe it isn't actually Zero. Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number Zero when scanned. That is what I'm saying. I mean, not wrong, but curious how you got to that conclusion since up until now, every bracelet has functioned as its supposed number. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. Oh, got it! They decided to use the following combination. Uh, Snake, Junpei, and the bracelet. Junpei, seven, the bracelet. Or Snake, Junpei, seven, and the bracelet. Um, hmm. So this would be two five. Hmm. I wonder if it really matters. Oh, let's just try this. Let's try me, Seven, and the bracelet. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is six. Hmm. It opened. Hmm. Yes, so it would seem. Okay. That means the bracelet is actually six. But how is that possible? The display on the bracelet clearly shows a zero. Oh man, that's not good. I guess our time's just about up, huh? At any rate, we know now that the door can be opened. Let's go! But, Snake, are you sure? Yeah. You know that only Junpei and I can go through this way. You needn't worry. I have a solution to this problem. My last resort. But if now is not the time for last resorts, then when? Last resort? So if this is six. Gotta admit, you really surprised me there, kid. I couldn't figure out how the hell you were gonna get out of that one. 
That begs the question, does that mean there are two number sixes, or is there something up with June's bracelet? How come you didn't do that right off the bat? As I told you, it was a last resort. Had I used it at the beginning of the game, I would have come under a great deal of suspicion. I imagine that most people would have taken it to mean that I was zero. Yeah, he just took off the prosthetic arm. <laughs> I wasn't optimistic about my chances of making it out of here alive, let alone unscathed. I felt it best to play my cards close to the chest, as it were. That way, if I were in a situation where there was nothing else I could do, I'd have a little trick up my sleeve. I'd just take my bracelet off. My brother's left arm is... Um, it's not like a normal person's arm. I know this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm glad that's a pick off. You don't have to be afraid of the door if you don't got a bracelet. You are correct. Though it is a bit concerning, because... <sighs> I'm going to assume that he just either got rid of his arm entirely, or like pulled his arm off, then managed to pull the bracelet off. Then where is the bracelet? He couldn't have brought it in with him, so what if someone else picks it up? I think these stairs connect to the bottom deck. He could really fuck him over that way. Doesn't look like it's underwater. Let's go through that door. Well, a lot of more reason it's the last resort. Incinerator? Oh my. That doesn't sound very pleasant. Do you see a lever near the gate? Yeah, right over here. How did you know that? Well, I'd be happy to regale you with the story. I imagine it should only take half a day or so. Uh, hmm. <sighs> if you pull it, the door ought to open. Got it. Why? Why is there another one? Oh, Emergency incineration command. Oh, that's a great thing to hear. Has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in <laughs> Under what circumstances would it oh man. Oh my, how exciting. You've run quite a show here, Zero. What's the matter? Too frightened to understand? Here, let me explain. It's said that the incineration system is about to activate. In nine minutes, this room will be engulfed in flame. Hmm. Who are you? You don't recognize me? I'm hurt. It's me, Snake. Snake? Oh uh, yes, you are alive. I'm afraid your bizarre style had me confused. <laughs> Damn. Dunking on his drip. I'm quite glad to see that you're alive. Hmm. If you don't mind my asking, how did you get here? Oh, the, the, the cl okay. I thought he was talking about his uh, original clothes, but no. <laughs> the robes are indeed weird. Snake, June Pay 7. The three of you couldn't have opened a door with a knife. Hmm. Did you use Clover's bracelet, perhaps? Oh boy, here it comes! What? Ah, well, your reaction suggests that you did not. Uh, hold on! Why did you think we'd have Clover's bracelet? Oh, they haven't told you? Told me what? Hmm, clearly not. Normally, I would take some time and enjoy the moment, but I'm afraid my time is at a premium just now. Yakking away in an incinerator. Clover. Don't do it, Ace! Keep your goddamn mouth shut! Clover. I said stop it! Don't listen to him, Snake. 
What happened to Clover? Clover died. No, that's not true. That's impossible. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. Oh, it's quite true. I can assure you of that. I killed her myself, you see. What? I'm sorry, did I stutter? I killed her. <sighs> I would have rather she died than be suffering. What happened to not having much time, Ace? A bullet in her brain, perhaps, would have been ideal. Unfortunately, that would have made quite a bit of noise. Circumstances being what they were, I was forced to settle for the knife. The one the ninth man had, you remember. <laughs> I believe I caught her just below the shoulder blade. I was rather lucky, in fact. My first thrust went right between her ribs. Her flesh was so soft. My knife slid in so easily. There was no resistance. That feeling was... I confess, I feel rather excited. It is a powerful memory. Someday, perhaps, I hope I can feel it again. Incineration will begin in seven minutes. I'm going to kill you. Hmm? What was that? I'm not sure what you're hoping to I'll accomplish, Yuri's. I'll kill you! Ah, so you're going to kill me. Please do. Come now. I'm waiting. Don't do it! Don't listen to him, Snake! Stop it, kid! He's screwing with your head! Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Don't! The snake! Don't do it! <gasps> <gasps> Give me the woman. I need her. Without her bracelet, I will be unable to open this door. Quickly now! I don't have time for your shenanigans. I see. Then it would seem I have no choice. The rest of you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, and the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. I will take Lotus's body with me and leave this room. Incineration will begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. I rather enjoyed playing with you. Damn it! Goodbye. Kill you? Damn. No, that's impossible. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. St stay away from me. Get back. Stop. If you come any closer, I'll, I'll get away from me. Get his ass, Snake. Listen to me. I said, don't come any closer. Shit, you bastard. Oof, well, there go the rest of them. Incineration will begin in three minutes. <laughs> Finally, you're... I'll kill you. You won't get away. You... You son of a bitch! You... You're a monster! Get off me! Let me go, damn you! This is it, Ace. Her 
going to burn to death together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. Yeah, damn it! Damn you! Get off! Let me go, you monster! Okay, 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 look. Think about it this way. My company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. You're, you're not wounded too seriously. I, I'm sure they can fix you up easily. Oh, he gives no shits about that, buddy. You, you are fucked. Die. You could be saved. Just let me go. <laughs> Medic. Begging for your life. Snake, that's enough. You can stop now. Yes. He's right, Snake. You've done enough. Come on, Snake. Let's go. Let's get out of here. You have to come with us. We have to leave together. I apologize. But I'm afraid I can't do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. I'm going to take him with me. Sheriff! Be quiet! I couldn't save Clover. My sister died because of me. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Oh, Snake. Perhaps in the afterlife she can forgive me. Now go. Go now. You have to go. Incineration will begin in one minute. God damn it! Shit! We're out of time! We gotta go! <sighs> uh, Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now! Snake! 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 Wait! Don't be an idiot, Junpei! No! No! I have to help Snake! 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 Get off of me! Let me go! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. Seven. Six. Damn it, I don't get a choice, kid! Don't blame me for this, alright? Honestly, Seven, for sticking around and trying to pull him back, that's... It takes a lot of guts. <laughs> <laughs> they like dumped all their CGs onto this ending. Wow. Hey, wait, Junpei. Junpei, where are you going? You stay here. I'll go get Santa and Jun. You're gonna bring them here? How? Don't worry about that. Just stay here and wait, all right? <laughs> <sighs> I saw an elevator on the way here. If I can get it to work, then maybe... 
Please work. Yes. June! Santa! Damn it. Where did they go? Oh. That was the hallway with them. Ninth man. Got taken back a second by the blood splatter. It's impossible. Oh, Connie! Connie, Connie, are you all right? Jumpy? Uh. Oh, man. Connie, what the hell happened to you? You, you feel... Jumpy, I'm sorry. I, uh, I might not make it. No, no way, no way. I am going to let you die. I am going to save you, I promise. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much uh, for everything. I was really happy to see you again, Jumpy. Really happy. Don't give me that I was crap. You're gonna see me again lots more times. You just gotta hang on. All right, Connie? Jumpy, did you know you meant a lot to me? When we were kids, I liked you for a long time. Junpei, a really long time. Zero. You son of a bitch! Where are you hiding? What the hell are you talking about? No. no, it hasn't. I'm not gonna let it end yet. I'm gonna get out of here with Connie. Why? The wrong path? What are you talking about? I told you, I am not going to lose. Wait here. I'll be right back, I promise. Uh. Damn it. Where are you? It doesn't matter. I need to get Kane out first. That does, however, at the very least confirm the argument the characters have been having of whether everything they've been listening to is a recording or if Zero is actually present. Connie! Oh god. No. No. Where is she? Connie. 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 Huh? Wait. This is And that is a safe ending!
I can only assume from that that he gets returned to his home. But who can say? I don't know if they ever uh, clarify that or not. But at this point, it's like, God, the only... We know Seven and Lotus are alive. Clover, Ace, Santa, and Akane are dead. And then we have no idea where Santa is. I'm just gonna wait to see if they have a little thing at the end of the credits. And then finally we can finish this up with the true path. Which I think will only have one area we haven't visited yet. The end, or is it? Bink said that this is her favorite ending, and I can see why. Even though there are still a lot of questions left unanswered. Chance of loss is not zero. Wait, saw the zero lost ending? Wait, was that not the safe ending? No, that's dead. Yeah, because we found the safe, so it's gotta be. Oof. Okay. Huh. Let me just look something up real quick to make sure that they're the same one. Okay, phew. Yes, they are. I was gonna be worried there for a sec. Okay, so then we can... get ourselves through and considering what happened last time when I just tried to go after a, a puzzle to solve and I guess the reason it still put me on the knife ending was because there was some new dialogue that had to be viewed I'm just gonna go through the doors again just to be on the safe side I thought we were finished with that topic But hey, we can speed through the we can speed through the rooms now. So for this, we will need to go through four. Wait, uh, let me make sure. Yes, four.
Okay, let's get through this quickly. So it says in June's room, get the matchsticks from the table on the right. Go into the bedroom and take the map from the wall. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? And this is when they were discussing how they had both been kidnapped by Zero. She says that she can't help feel a little suspicious and it's quite the coincidence that they are childhood friends who both got kidnapped. Okay, we got the map. Examine the dresser for the dresser key. Ah, this ship is bigger than I thought. A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Rich fans, people. Crazy Titanic fans. No way! Do you even know how much money that would take? Rich people. No idea. <laughs> but all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? Uh, yes, in fact. It, I think that would be a huge incentive, even. Just see some of the crazy shit people have done just to be able to see the wreckage, which ended very horribly. It's the site of the worst accident in history. Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Okay, I think we're... Oh, nope, still on. I do or no, they're a load of crap. Hmm. Which will get us more interesting dialogue. You know what? Let's just let's go with no. They're a load of crap. Sorry, but I I can't really say I believe in that kind of stuff. Cause I think that'll give her more incentive to explain her side. Tact was not one of Junpei's many better qualities. Uh, what about you? No, I I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sank the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. And, all right, I forgot. She just goes into the stuff the about the mummy. The Egyptian mummy. Junpei couldn't understand how Jun had maintained a straight face to say that. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess on it, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Uh, haven't you ever heard that one? So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! Hmm. I'm curious about this. I've never touched this before. What does it... ADV... Okay. Okay. Hello, PCU, and hello, Zuni. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's good to be back. <laughs> uh, you missed us getting the, the... It's funny because it's... I think it was originally called the safe ending. Now they uh, <laughs> changed it to zero lost ending. But the safe ending involved... Uh, Clover being stabbed to death. Tani dying somehow, presumably from her fever, and Ace and Snake being burned alive in an incinerator. So good times! And then uh, Jinpei was knocked out by gas, and that's how it ended. <laughs> uh. 
Uh. <laughs> Can we explain which part? <laughs> The, the the being burned by an incinerator. <laughs> so that part uh, happened when Seven and Junpei returned to that one area that kind of that had the coffin in it with the digital lock, and they were able to open it up. And apparently, Snake had been there the entire time he had been asleep. We don't know why, we didn't get an answer to that in that route, but we gave him the lowdown on everything that had happened, except the part for, you know, his sister being murdered. Uh, but we're like, hey, we gotta hurry up, uh, Ace has, has Lotus, so we need to try and save her. And we managed to get through the ninth door, because something that Clover had apparently had on hand was that she had found a bracelet with the which appeared to have the number zero on it. But after testing it out at the door number nine and doing different combinations, we were able to find out that it was actually door number six. And that allowed us to get through using Junpei's, the secret six and uh, seven's bracelet. And since we found out that Snake had a prosthetic arm he was able to pull his arm off to not to be able to pass through without having to scan his bracelet which he explained he didn't want to do from the beginning because if he did that then everyone would have suspected he was zero so he was just kind of leaving it for a sort of last resort and they were able to find ace and lotus in there but they had to there was another door number nine that they would need to pass through that it was through an incinerator and we don't know why, we'll probably be finding that out, but someone activated the incinerator while they were there. And for some reason, Ace thought it would be a good idea to antagonize Snake about having murdered his sister. I, I guess since he had wanted to kill Snake from the very beginning, he did it in order to try and antagonize him into attacking him. And so then he just ended up shooting him. But he didn't realize that Snake would be so fucking mad about that that he would just stand back up and keep going at him until even after Ace unloaded the entire round onto him. And so he pretty much told the others, okay, uh, you guys go, I'm gonna keep this guy pinned down here. So the others managed to get back out. And uh, then the doors closed and both of them were incinerated. Good times, good times. But yep, now we're going through the last tidbit to get the true end. And these are all rooms that Kudu and I already did. So I'm just going through them because uh, I think one time when I tried to skip a room, it put me on an old ending because there was like new dialogue that I had to go through in order for it to fully trigger. Uh, yes. Okay, grab this key. And now we go over to the other room. And take the candlestick off the table. Combine matches. there then we can take these looking through here oh wait let's see open the drawer dresser with a dresser key uh, and... okay take this plate
Can grab Oop. this key. Okay. And then we can unlock this. Take this plate. Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? We'll go through this dialogue, grab the bookmark from him. That thing was a real pain, you know. You really hate those four words that much? to the bathroom. All right, then we go to the other bathroom. Let's see, Zuni says, did you really pull a, it's not a nine, it's an inverted six. Man, that alone was enough for zero to get shot, ignoring all the whole death game part. Um, it was a, it was a, a zero that was like the hidden six, but yeah, they're fucking around with numbers. And then... There we go. What's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a hole in the wall. It looks like getting safe or something, you know. Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. Mars key. And 
this is where we get the explanation of morphogenetic fields. Which is just a... Let's just go with the same dialogue so we don't have to go through something new. But just a bunch of experiments that were done in, in a way to try and discuss potential of telepathy. Looking at the poll that I did in order to see what the interest was for Star Trek, looks like there is a lot of interest, just all depends on the time, which not not too surprising. Uh, I, w I was glad to see that there was a good turnout for that. So hopefully we'll be able to find something that will be accommodating for as many people as possible. Sink, get whetstone. Go to Pantry. And that's not the Pantry. All, I thought all Pantries had uh, card locks on them. Okay, uh, let's see. Look behind the middle cheese. Acquire bottle of oil. Check thin box on the shelves for a rusty knife. A rusty knife. I don't. It's you. You talk. You know. Oh, um, uh, any particular reason you want? And then we can combine this with the... No, not that. Uh, the whetstone. And then use oil on rusted deadbolt to open the door left of the pantry. And this is where the Ice Nine discussion was had. Okay. Shelves to grab a piece of pork. Open cabinet for dry ice and chicken. Dry ice? Yeah, it, it is. No, she was not. She just appeared for a moment to be like, oh, fuck, it's cold in here, I'm out. <laughs>
Which, you know, none of them are dressed for this, but her especially. This frozen meat. Man, I don't, I don't play a whole lot of uh, point and click games. Not because I dislike them. But a lot of them involve this sort of puzzle where you need to combine a bunch of different things and too often the the logic for them is so obtuse that I'm completely and utterly lost. Uh, let's see, combine water and dry ice with sturdy rope. Select door handle. Put water into the bottle with dry ice. I think the last point-and-click adventure I ever played was, uh... Oh gosh, what was it? It was by the same people who did... Oh man, why am I blanking on the name? You played as two different characters, a boy and a girl, and you switched between them. They had different storylines that eventually... Brave... Oh god, no, no. Broken Age, was it? Yes, Broken Age. Actually, that was going to be one of the first things... When we first started the channel, that was actually going to be the very first thing that I... Uh, uploaded. Let's Played. But yeah, I was like, oh god, I am making a fool of myself of how long I am taking to solve this shit. <laughs> I did end up beating it, and I wish I'd stuck to Let's Playing it. And there was a lot to enjoy about it, but the ending... The ending was very weird. The ending was kind of... Oh, why is my hand going up there? Oh well. Probably been going up a lot. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let me quickly disable that. Don't look behind the curtain. You looked. You're gonna be spanked. Uh, yeah, but, like, I really enjoyed the sort of- it was split up into two acts, and I enjoyed the first act a lot. It was very charming, it was very pretty, it had a curious story. But then they kind of pulled something out of left field at the end that didn't feel very appropriate. Like, I don't mind my, uh, I don't want to ruin it. And I, I definitely don't mind, like, dark shit, obviously. But if it's like, it was like if in... <laughs> you know, I was gonna say... I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, a... Like, the first one that came to my mind is My Little Pony, which I, I, I think I saw the first season of. And I was gonna say, it was like if My Little Pony suddenly in the show they just had, like, some horrific genocide happen or something like that. But I know that fandom is quite notorious for indeed making horrible shit, but you know, I, I, I assume it never quite reached the show. So it was like... You know, I mean, I guess this is sort of interesting, but it doesn't feel appropriate for the story you've been telling so far. It, it was weird. I, 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 I didn't like the ending.
Okay, so we've got there. So now we examine the stove. Um. Oh, whoops. Not that there. The stove in the back. There we go. So MOP Friendship of Magic was as the fans imagined. It, it, yeah. Like, I gotta wanna I don't even wanna say exactly what it was that they pulled because it was really kinda gross when you think about it too much. But yeah. Okay, so now, here we go. And that is that. I'm trying to think of what other ones I've played. I feel like I have tried a couple, but they were, gosh, way early on. I think we've been here before. How about you? Have any of you played any point-and-click adventures? Now I'm trying to remember. Let me see if I can look up the list. Just trying to remember which ones it was that I tried. Oh, I always wanted to give Maniac Mansion a try, just because I always heard so much about it. Grim Fandango. Hmm. 
And we're just gonna skip all this. Sam and Max always seemed charming as well. Wait a Okay, so this time the room we need to pick is seven. Gosh, watch, I'm going to be doing it this way the long way and it's going to ha end up being that it, it, it didn't matter. That I've, I've, I'm already set. Cause yeah, we didn't get any, we didn't get anything new there that we didn't purposely prompt. But I'd rather be safe than having to go all the way back again. Damn, we've done we've done this room like three times now. <laughs> Pick chest from the bench. It's forceps on the mannequin bust. Combine fake organ with scalpel for organ weak key. I'm a note on table. Oops. No oh, way, I think I want to. I guess it wouldn't matter what order we did it in. But... Oops. 
Sorry, I'm rushing through this so much. So it does matter. You think we should go back? This is where he tells us something similar to the rat experiment. Er. About Ice Nine. So I guess, I guess it is good that I'm going through this because these prompts are important. So even if they are ones we've already done, they still get us what we need. They still help get us what we need. Okay, I guess that gives us everything. Now this is this part. Okay, so I think we just switch pretty much. Alrighty. Eh? Hold on. Here's where we managed to cheer Clover up a little. Which is one of the uh, few scenes that I actually feel hits when it comes to the characters. 
At least previous to the ending. Ship of Theseus. Hmm. They left the operating room, the hallway took them around several corners, several doors. And now next door will be a new one, so we'll be back to doing stuff and reading. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Since we didn't fuck everyone over by uh, pulling the trick where we just ran straight into door number three, we'll get the chance to... to pick again. Never cursed dialogue. Well, now we know, uh, but certainly isn't fake, and we know who's responsible for that. Do you know who's responsible for that, Ace? No? Huh. Not sure why I got the impression you did. So titties, you finally get to have door number one like you wanted to. Hey, wait a minute there. You cheating? Cheating? I'm asking if you changed your number after you heard what doors we wanted. How could I do that? I wrote it down on the paper earlier. Let me see that. Sure, here. Junpei shrugged and handed it to him. Santa examined it furiously. The others peered at it as well. As they did, Junpei quickly slipped the piece of paper he'd been hiding into his pocket. Although he'd never know it, Santa had been justified in his suspicions. 
Junpei had switched papers. I have three pieces of paper ready. For doors one, two, and six. And I put the one with door six on it into the pot. He put a small mark on it so he would know which one was his. Say. He fought the urge to smirk. <laughs> you got lucky. Sansa snorted and tossed the paper aside, frustrated. Very well. We've decided who will go through door one. It will be Clover, Junpei, and myself. Our yeah, yeah. The problem is the two remaining teams. June and I want door six. Lotus and I want door two. That's not good. We can't open either of those doors with only two people. <sighs> Aw. Fine. Seven, we'll go through door six. Sure thing. I didn't really want to go through door two anyway. Besides, if we've got a younger girl with us, it'll lower the average age. Right, June? <sighs> uh, well, <sighs> June was at a loss for words. Lotus was not. Pig. You just wait and see. Her eyes were the eyes of a woman prepared to kill. A shiver ran down Junpei's spine. Calling me old. This is why men are such a pain in the ass. They're about as subtle as a brick. And they're at it again. Even after they separated at the staircase, Lotus was still muttering angrily to herself. I'll see you later, June. Jumpy. Circumstances dictated that Junpei and June would have to part ways again, but this time it didn't sting quite so much. Don't make that face. It'll be like what Seven said. We aren't going to be, be split, split up permanently till we find door nine. nine. We, might we might get separated, separated for a little while, while but we'll see each other again. again. Otherwise, Otherwise, we won't be able to open door, door 9. nine. That's, That's how the notary, notary game works. Seven's words took a weight off Junpei's shoulder and felt much better. It'll be fine. I'll see you soon. All right. See you later. Lingering uneasy remained, but they went their separate directions without much trouble. Junpei, Ace, and Clover headed towards A deck. Here's A deck. It was the door on the left, right? Mm. That should be it, yes. And here we go. It opened, and they walked through. It's just as Santa and Lotus said. At the end of the hallway sat a door with a large red one upon it. A numbered door. To the left of it, bolted to the wall, was the red. There's the red. I'll go first. Ace went first and waved his wrist over the scanner panel. Now the two of you. Junpei was next. Finally, listlessly, Clover lifted her arm. She leaned toward the scanner panel. The third asterisk clicked to life, shining brightly. Ace took hold of the lever. Now. He took a deep breath and turned to Junpei and Clover. Anytime. Hmm. Clover said nothing. She nodded, a little more than a lethargic twitch of the head. Very well, then. Let's go. Three, two, 
It's open. Move it. They stumbled into the door. Where? Where is it? Frantically, Junpei scanned the room. His eyes stopped on the device that would determine whether they lived or not. Uh, there it is. Over there. Next to the door they'd come through was the dead. As one, they ran to it. They put their hands over it as if they were fighting for it. <sighs> it stopped. Yes, it did. Junpei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Ace and Clover were breathing hard and fast. Whew. I don't believe I'll ever get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. <laughs> I agree. Now then. Squints at him. Junpei looked around again, this time more slowly. No, we ourselves don't have to. That would have been a very nice, like, little mini-game for them to add. <laughs> but it's always just been written out. The most frantic one, I think, There's was... Ah. Uh, gosh, that was one that did take them a while to find, and they had to, like, go through... They tried going through several rooms before having to, like, do a sprint down the end of a hallway to get to it. Let's try opening it. He took hold of the knob and easily, gently pulled it open. So, this is the wheelhouse? He closed the door again and turned to Ace and Clover. He fixed each in turn with a meaningful stare and then spoke. Ace, you investigate the wheelhouse next door. Very well. Clover, you're in charge of this room. Uh, Say something. Okay, I will. All right then, let's get started. All righty. What are we working with? Chart room. Okay. Yeah, that's that's um so the way that whole thing works is that they have to go through every person uh every person that scans has to go through. Oh gosh. <laughs> Roid? It's okay, it's gonna be okay. So every person that scans has to go through because every person that scans at the red um, has to then scan again at the dead. Because the second they go through the door a signal gets sent from their bracelet to a bomb in their intestines. So if they don't scan at the dead within 81 seconds, that bomb goes off. So everyone has to go through because like, let's say um, one person goes through and the others don't, they won't be able to deactivate the bomb. And that's how Seven had thought that Snake had been killed. They, he thought that two people had gone and scanned their bracelet with Snake, then just thrown him through but not gone through the door themselves. Because the signal only goes off once you go through the door. So 
So I guess it was, it was, it's, I think it's just to add some sort of anxiety to it. Like, hey, are they going to be able to find it in time? But since they only really seem to struggle with it that once, it does kind of lose, lose a bit of its momentum. And of course, the first time. A light. It looks kind of like a wilted flower. Oh, wow. Stack of nautical charts. I think this is a nautical chart. There's this line on it here. I think the line is the route the ship is supposed to take. There are these dots all over the map. Oh, those are probably ports, like for a boat to stop at. It looks like the lines connect the dots. There's nothing left in the drawer. I guess it's probably for reading maps or something. Yeah, they probably spread the map out here and there decide on the route. Is that the only shelf we can check? Can we check the bottom one? No. Uh, let's go back. Ooh, that's not the... I guess this is the door? Yeah, let's go back here and finish here first. It's a wooden box. Maybe a case for letters. Hey, Clover, you ever write letters? Nothing. The left drawer. Let's have a look. Nothing. The right drawer. Let's have a look and nothing. A pocket watch. That's a pocket watch. She sure hasn't been saying much. And she just keeps looking at the floor. She seems kind of sad. I really have no idea why. A voice he hadn't expected startled Junpei from his examination of the pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? He spun around to find Ace standing in the doorway. Junpei shrugged and handed him the pocket watch. Hey, man. What are you doing over in this room? Oh, I just thought I'd come check up on the two of you. Is there a problem? Well, not a problem, but... That's a lie. I wanted to get rid of Ace. I sent him to the wheelhouse at the beginning for a reason. I wanted to talk to Clover alone. There's something I want to ask her. And I don't want anyone to overhear us. I'm pretty sure Clover won't talk if there's anyone else around. I'm mm. a little desperate to send him back. Quick. He has to leave. Ace opened his mouth, then took another look at Junpei and shut it again. A small smirk appeared on his face. Oh, oh. I see. Of course. He looked Junpei over, then glanced at Clover. I Ace gave Junpei a knowing pat on the shoulder and left. <sighs> Junpei let out a sigh and brushed a few drops of sweat from his forehead. He turned and found himself looking straight into Clover's eyes. She'd heard what Ace had said. She regarded Junpei with caution. <laughs> what was that? She was clearly suspicious and with good reason. Why are you looking at me like that? Jinpei's eyes widened he, and he held up his hands in a gesture of innocence. Oh, uh, no, 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 it's not like that. What's it like then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. What story? About the experiment, remember? The one you started to tell me in the operating room? You said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. Clover bit her lip. She stared down at the floor for several long moments, and when she spoke, it was barely audible. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Uh. You understand, right? I'm just... I keep thinking about my brother. I I can't stop. 
I mean, who would do something like that to my brother? <sighs> I can't forgive them. I'm not gonna let them get away with it. They're gonna pay for it. I promise. So, so... Her shoulders were shaking. Drops of blood had sprung up on her lips where she was biting them. She wiped it off and looked up at Junpei, her eyes fierce and angry. Junpei, who do you think did it? Her voice was cold and scarcely above a whisper. Junpei gulped. Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the numbered doors, and if you subtract Snake, that means there were at least two other people. You're right. So, what does that mean? Well, if we just look at the bracelet numbers, we should be able to figure it out. Who could have opened door three with Snake? Well, really, who and who, or who, who, and who? You mean it could have been four people? Well, technically, it's possible. Um, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Okay, uh, got it. Let's do that then. Then who do you think it could be? Junpei crossed his arms and thought. Snake's bracelet number was two. Which two bracelets added to two would give a digital root of three? Which two bracelet numbers added to two would give a digital root of three? Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to remember what everyone's is. Santa is... What is Santa's? Ah, shit, I'm blanking. Well, we know Ace is one, Sneak is two. Uh, he's... Oh, okay. Digital root for Snake, Santa, and Seven is... Three! Wait, hold on. Are Santa and Seven... the killers? Huh. What's wrong? Clover looked at Junpei and he looked back at her. There was no point in hiding it. Well, I thought about it. He told her his conclusions. That's what I thought. She looked less surprised than he'd expected. Santa and Seven. If it was two people, then that's the only combination that works. It'd be pretty surprising for Seven to give away how they did it if he was involved. I mean, we all know the truth now, but figure, trying to figure this out from their perspective with their knowledge, hey, that would still seem off. There. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibilities? Uh, um... He didn't have an answer. He was ready to admit defeat when Clover spoke. Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? I really don't think that's likely. Why not? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Clover put her hand out expectantly. Yeah, here. 
Junpei pulled out his pen and pad of paper and handed them to her. She opened the notebook and wrote down several simple addition problems. Eventually, she had eight, which provided a digital root of three. Yep, yep, yep. What's this? So let's see, we've got... Ace, Santa, and June. This one has a combination of Clover and Junpei. This one has Lotus and Seven. I don't know. So yeah, there are a couple there that involve Junpei and her, so I guess that's why she's eliminating them. These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. Oh, I see. Junpei? Yeah? I... I can trust you, right? Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. You know, honestly, I... Like, out of all the relationships that I see in this, and I'm speaking this in, like, a purely platonic tone, I feel these two are the ones that kind of have the most believable, like, the budding, sort of, brotherly uh, protectiveness that he has over Clover and how she grows to trust him out of everyone in the ship. Because I feel these two are probably the most, sort of, real and endearing when they're talking together and trying to figure this all out. Yeah, just going from her beginning all chipper to her falling into this depression and the several times that he cheers her up and now this. And you should take off yours too. The ones with four. So, what does that leave? A and E. It can't be A. Why? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. Are you sure? I bet my life on it. Are you really sure? Okay then. I can cross off A too, right? Yeah. Well, what have we got left? E. you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they outnumbered us, right? Well, you do have a point. And besides, if Ace and Seven are working together, they could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. If they no, that were killers, why wouldn't they? Uh, well, I guess the entire point you're making is that they wouldn't need to be subtle. <laughs> her voice was calm, but Junpei had only to look in her in the eye to know that it was a forced calm. There were tears forming at the corner of her eyes, and she was blinking furiously to keep them back. Perhaps by attempting an objective analysis of who might have killed her brother, she had been able to distance herself from the harsh reality of his death. She was probably running those calculations this entire time, in between doing the puzzles. The more she struggled to act unconcerned, the more Junpei felt his heart tighten. Oh, I see. Anyway, I understand now. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks. But why would they do it? There was a moment of silence. Their motive. He laid his hand gently on her shoulder. He was close, 
So close to the answer. When Ace chose the worst possible moment to return. He raised a knowing eyebrow and then spoke. Have I interrupted something? Uh, uh. What is it? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? And I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break to refill my water and use the loo. One moment.
Okay, we are back. He, he turned on his heel and walked back towards the wheelhouse. Go ahead. Okay. Junpei looked over at Clover. He gave her a short nod, hoped that she would be willing to talk to him again later, and followed Ace. What did you want to talk about? Ace looked at Junpei and smiled. Perhaps more of a smirk than a smile. There was something I wanted to check. Yeah? What's that? If you'll excuse me. With no warning, Ace slipped his hand into the pocket of Junpei's vest. Hey, what, what the hell are you doing? I'm just checking. No, 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 stop! He reached for Ace's arm. But it was already too late. I... In the older man's hands were the pieces of paper Junpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Just as I thought. What exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? <sighs> you switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Um. Not with your pants down. <sighs> well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. Then, why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Not for that. Ace smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, and then turned on his heel and left. Uh... It was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his stomach begin to tense. Ah, <sighs> damn. Alright, let's go back, finish this. Yeah, we already checked here. Um, there's a wooden box on the desk. Doesn't look very suspicious. The shelves are lined with books. Let's see what's in this blue one. There's something written on it. Ship's log. Huh. Ship's log, huh? New material added to the file screen. What do we've got here? A ship's log found in the chart room. The following is written on the last page. We leave soon for a new journey across the sea. After leaving port, we headed south and west. We turned southwest to steer around the continent and proceeded northwest. I'm going to need to write this down, aren't I? Okay. South plus west. And then southwest. To steer around continent and proceeded northwest. We made port and changed our heading to east for a time. And are now headed due north. Soon we will dock in the UK, the homeland of this vessel. Okay. A map. It's got the Atlantic Ocean in the middle. Hey, Junpei. When do you... Th what do you think these red things are? Yeah, they look like pins. What do you think they're for? Who knows? What do you mean, who knows? Come on, be serious! I am. Red pins on a map of the world. I wonder what they mean. Hey, Junpei, you sure you don't have any, like, hints or clues or something? Oh, um, yeah? Let me see if they match up. Uh, 
What do you think the red penis men? Well, the nautical charts I picked up earlier have a map like this one. Maybe one of the matches up to the pins or something. Let's see. Well, what do you know? Looks like this one's a match to the pins. Okay, so we've got seven locations connected by straight lines. And each one has a word next to it. That's probably the speed. Okay. An article table found in the chart room. It shows directions of... Jeez. Okay. South. West. Southwest. Northwest. East. North. Straight. There's a word next to each point on the map. Full, half, slow, full, half, dead, stop. That's what it says. Let's let me see. Self half. Okay. A chair. A chair. Clover isn't talking much. Well, I guess that's understandable. I mean she's been through a lot. Really, it's more surprising that she's still together enough to talk at all. The dead is bolted to the wall here. Junpei, are you trying to open that door? Forget it, it's pointless. I tried earlier. It won't open. <sighs> this isn't good. So many drawers, but nothing inside of them. There's another room on the other side of the window. A compass. It appears to be broken, however. You see, the glass cover has been smashed to pieces. <laughs> the helm. Well, steering wheel might be a more appropriate term. A desk. Anything in the drawers? Nope. Lock. That vaguely resembles a bomb. This looks familiar. I saw something earlier that's the same shape as this hole. I know it. Where's our little compass? Do you still have? Do we still have it with us? Yes. It looks like this is some sort of lock. It's got a weird shaped indention in it. Hmm. This shape. Maybe. It does look like the pocket watch should fit here. Hmm. Nothing. I imagine the pocket watch is intended to go in there. However, we may need to do something with the watch first. A, me a mechanical pocket watch with a spring. It doesn't appear to be working. The hands have stopped at 5 minutes 39 seconds past 10 o'clock. Okay... Okay. Turning the knob does nothing. Yeah, it's pr 
probably broken. It looks as though you could move the hand, however. Can I now? Hmm. This thing won't budge. Feels like there's something keeping it in place. What would be the point of moving it? The ship has stopped. What would be the use of steering it? Yeah, I know. Still. Uh, okay. Oh. An engine order telegraph. They use this on old ships to adjust the speed of the ship. Like the gear shift in a car. Well, it's a little different. This device doesn't connect directly to the engine. In short, it's a transmitter. The navigation officer uses it to set the speed of the ship, and it sends a signal to the engine. There's a handle on top of it which can be moved back and forth to. Hold on. Huh? There's no handle. You're right, there isn't. It looks as though it was deliberately removed. There's a metal plate bolted over the window. A wooden board. Nothing suspicious here. A steering wheel. There are handles placed at regular intervals, so it's easy to turn. Old school. Hey. A handle? If we can find a replacement handle, I could probably get it to move. Let's look at this one over here. Ah, a human hammer. They're often used to subdue large men like Seven. Uh, what? Yeah, my sentiments exactly, Junpei. <laughs> that was a joke, of course. Uh, thank you, Captain Obvious. Ace, you really kind of suck at making jokes. <laughs> that was rather cruel. It, it feels so weird having that exchange now. If this had come before the reveal, that would have been cute and endearing, and now it's just like, I don't think that was a joke, guys. <laughs> a steering wheel. Let's see if it- Whoa! Looks like the steering wheel moves. So it would seem. I noticed something else as well. What's that? Well, when you move this wheel, the compass also moves. What do you mean? The ship. It's moving. Heh. <laughs> Tricked you, didn't I? The wheel and the compass must be connected to one another somehow. Hmm. Do you think it's important? Well, let's try turning it again. Uh... Oh. Okay, I see. But let's restart that. Steering wheel, steering wheel. If we move it, then the direction changes. But which one do we do first? I swore I saw something that had directions. Maybe if I enter the directions in that order. Uh, well, let's try the... So when it gets to southwest... And then... Southwest again? Oh! Ah, shoot. Okay. Thought I hit it too. And then a northwest. Then east. Then north. Hmm, no, that did not work. 
All right, so let's try the other one. Uh, let's exit out, restart it. This is almost certainly one of those zeros puzzles. There must be a clue somewhere that will help us solve it. Yeah. So the first one is south. Then west. Then southwest. Then northwest. Then east. Then north. There we go. What the? The handle came off. <laughs> I'm stooping so low, are you, Zero? Okay, and let's add this here. So, I sure hope this handle fits. Yes, it fits! Excellent. And that should allow us to operate the engine order telegraph. Let's give it a shot. Ah, here we go. So, is it the same order? That would have been four, half, low... Full half dead stop. Okay. Full half slow full half There are two dead stop huh that's weird i thought i put in the right speed did i mess up no i don't think so look something's happening on the back wall of the wheelhouse yeah you're right let's check it out There's something on the wall that looks like some kind of an arrival board. There are a whole bunch of words on the left side of the display. What the hell is this? They're the names of ports across the world. I imagine it's showing us the ship's route. You know, just like the one you might see just like the ones you might see in an airport. Departing X carrier X flight X at so and so. Like that. Oh, I get it. It does look like those are the names of all the ports along the ship's route. It looks like the only it looks like only one of those has a time on it though. The time on the last line, right? Ten seconds past three o'clock. Perhaps that's the arrival time. Hmm. So, do we fiddle around with the pocket watch now? A broken pocket watch. I can only move the hands manually. The knob doesn't work. Or do we have to have it... Uh... A digital scoreboard or something like that on the left side. It's got the names of ports the ship will stop at along its route. The last line says 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. That must be the estimated time of arrival at the final port. Hmm. Oh, perhaps... Whoa, what's he doing? Excuse me, Junpei. Hey, he just took my pocket watch. Uh, hey, 
What the hell are you doing? Just trust me. It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. Let's see what he... Oh, he moved the hands. Ten seconds past three o'clock. Oh, so you changed it to match the final arrival time. Zuni asked, would they really record the seconds after the minute it arrived back? <laughs> They're very, very efficient. You'll never have a late flight with them. Or a late ship. Ace nodded slowly. You know what to do next, right? Give it a shot. Looks like this is some sort of lock. It's got a weird shape. Yep. Let's try put it in here. Yes! It says open now. <laughs> Good work. It seems you are successful. Well done, Junpei. Hey! Clover! Alright, that had a... <laughs> I, I think I gave that a different inflection than was intended. I thought he was complaining because that came off as patronizing. <laughs> what? Look! We've unlocked the door! Now we can get out of this room! Oh. Well, let's go then. Over. Far too narrow to be called one. They found themselves in a small space outside of the wheelhouse. On their left was a wooden door. This seems to be the only route. Yeah, let's go. Junpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. Wow. It was full of all manner of turn of the century electronic equipment well these machines are weird uh, i've never seen any of them before huh wait this one is one small machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle he seemed to recognize it oh yes a telegraph key these were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He turned and slowly took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. And that door? A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read... Captain's quarters. Huh. That's what it says. Then... Do you think? A swallowed. Junpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. She walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. It opened easily and without so much as a pause she walked in. Junpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw was a man on the floor, covered in blood. <laughs> Junpei felt his body seize up. His mouth went dry and he felt very, very cold. The blood in his veins slowed to a crawl and his heart tightened like a fist. Not again. This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. Still, he had begun to accept whatever it was that he saw. Whatever happened to him was beyond his control, 
and whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. Damn. A sense of helplessness, of desperation washed over him. It left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body like acid. No, wait. We didn't check his pulse yet. Maybe he's still alive. Fueled by that spark of hope, Junpei ran to the man's body, and his heart fell. When he touched his hand to his neck, no pulse. His pupils had dilated, and he wasn't breathing. Well, he's dead. Damn. If only we knew how it happened. Junpei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. These wounds... Uh, I wonder what killed him. Junpei did not have to wonder long. It must have been this. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by an axe. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched out around it. It was wearing the clothes of a ship's captain, although they were just stained with they were although they were stained with blood. These clothes. A captain. Does that mean this guy was zero? On his left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was... Zero. Bracelet zero. It was only then that Junpei noticed the scent of blood that filled the room. <sighs> he couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it was a joke. Junpei. It may be wise to find a way out of here first. Yeah, you're right. Zuni says, wait a minute, he don't got his officer's loop. What kind of respectable captain does not have his officer's loop? It looks like it's pointed at the door. Well, the power's on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? So this is the exit, huh? Don't even really have to try this door to know that it's locked. I knew it. There's a plaque on the door, but it doesn't say anything. There's blood on the chair. Do you think this was the dead guy's? Yeah, probably. Oh, a music box. Oh, it's one of those old mu bo music boxes. How about we wind it up? Ah, oh, beautiful. Why does it sound like that? Is it broken? The pins on the cylinders are shaped all weird. I don't think those are the pins. It looks like someone put something else on top of it. I think we're gonna have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? It's a lamp. But it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. It's a bed. There's nothing under the sheets. Are you sure? A bed. There's nothing in it. I guess they are. They look like batteries. There's a cable running from them to the monitor. And what's the deal with this? Is this some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. 
They all start with a zero and end with A, F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this has something to do with the n with number bases. New material has been added to the file screen. Did it update? Oh well. There's just some random hallway on this one. The screen shows the big hospital room. This one shows the central staircase on C deck. I don't recognize the room in this one. The room on this screen looks really fancy. The screen shows what's going on in a small room somewhere that I don't recognize. The screen's showing what happened at the central staircase on B deck. There's a bunch of weird buttons on here. They probably switch what you see on the screen. Do you know how to work this thing? Um, why don't we just press one of these... Like this one. Uh, I guess it does change the... What the hell is this? Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter, each spelling out Z E R O, huh? It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Clover nodded. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she hadn't responded. Was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured towards the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero was one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Uh-huh. Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it, it's too obvious. <laughs> look, look, this is zero right here. This dead body is zero. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. Seven walks in and he's like, hey, it's zero. <laughs> nah, Seven's actually pretty smart. Honestly, they're all pretty smart. But the writing doesn't do them favors a lot of times. No, that, that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder... Why did they do it? I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Uh? Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. Uh. I like how he gave him a little twang there. 
<laughs> the killer must have known we wouldn't think he was zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't zero. Where's the real me then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted. And it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Junpei bent down next to the corpse. Alright, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Hmm. Junpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. Huh? We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? <sighs> Clover didn't move. Okay, fine. Guess I'll do it. Junpei had no choice but to move the body on his own. Here we go. <clears throat> he grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. It took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, uh -huh. something fell from the man's left wrist. Hey, it's the... The bracelet with zero on the face. Oh God! Junpei stared at the bracelet. This man, he's dead, isn't he? No. Huh? No, it's just I. I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. You know? I mean, if, if there wasn't all this blood, he almost looked like he was still alive. <laughs> I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Maybe... Because the explosions, I feel, would be an instantaneous death. Well, maybe not. Considering... No, yeah, they'd be an instantaneous death. The axe... That would take a couple of blows and then you bleeding out, most likely. Dying from a bomb going off inside of you? I mean, that's just... I don't know, then again, I have heard stories of people surviving some wild shit. Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. <laughs> oh, Chinpei. I think I'm, I know where this is going now that he mentioned the left arm, but just saying this, dude, dude. And... Uh And this is a route we're on where he doesn't- he never got this information. Suddenly Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. She picked up the axe and just chopped into fucking pieces. <laughs> he turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh man, uh, I am... I, I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean, 
No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? A uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I, I did, but I mean, I didn't didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There's no way I was going to see the details. Clover took a quick deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? Junpei thought back. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! She shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> no sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Clover? What's wrong? Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Suddenly she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he had expected to hear. Huh? What are you... Junpei had no idea what had just happened. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So he simply stood there, confused. Thank you so much, Junpei! She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. Clover threw herself into Junpei's surprised arms. Hey, uh, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just... I'm so happy! Why? The body in the shower room... Huh? Oh fuck whoever it really was. <laughs> it's not Snake. Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Uh. Junpei decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. If she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Junpei's heart. But he's still alive. I'm, I'm so happy. Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she had pushed herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held her tight. I'm so glad! Uh -huh. Junpei, you were right! Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, That'll bring you good luck. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. Uh, that's... It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody. I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Yeah. Junpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. Oh, uh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf? I got that from him, too. Oh. Um. Uh. Uh. Then suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Uh-huh. He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react to that poorly. Clover began to pace across the room.
six steps to the left, six steps to the right, another six to the left, and then she stopped. Did, did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother and me. <sighs> but he's blind, and I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, time out. Junpei held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You, you gotta start with one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never going to be able to figure it out. Okay. Clover nodded. All right. Let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Morphogenetic fields? He did, and the realization sent chills down Junpei's spine. All right. How about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm. Telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonera Gang. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Junpei grabbed the sides of his head. Look, I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. What do the nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Am I missing something here? Clover bit her lip. She blinked back, sudden tears. What had happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And, and, someone did actually die. A girl. Huh. Junpei felt the sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed, and for a moment he felt very, very empty and alone. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her, but I did hear her name. Huh? Her name was... The sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. Junpei spun around. Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Again. Ace, you two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. He does have a good point. We've just kind of been sta standing next to this giant pool of blood. <laughs> Ace glanced down at the floor. At the corpse 
covered in blood. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble, and I could really use your assistance. Uh, come on. It'll only take a moment. With that, he turned and walked back towards the communications office. Clover waited until he was out of sight, then spoke in a small, quiet voice. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Clover ignored him. From outside, Junpei could hear Ace calling. Junpei? What are you doing in there? Hurry up! <sighs> Grumbling to himself, Junpei stomped off towards the communications office. Look, a hook. That wasn't a joke! I know, man. <laughs> hey, what is this? It's blank. There's something written on it. A white piece of paper. It's blank. There isn't. Nothing in the drawer anymore. It looks as though it looks as though that drawer is the only thing that's locked. I don't see a keyhole though. An electric lock, perhaps. Take a look at the left side of the drawer. Yeah, there's some cables over there. That must mean an early telecommunications device. Most likely used to transmit a radio or signal of some sort. I experimented with, with it earlier, but to no avail. I imagine it's broken. There's a pair of headphones on the desk. A chair. A clock mounted on the wall. The hands aren't moving. Little surprise that the time is wrong then, I suppose. And there's nothing on the back. Can we do the bottom drawer? Nope. It's a telegraph key. A machine for transmitting Morse code. I tried sending an SOS earlier, but I doubt that did anything. Zero would never make it that easy. So you think it's broken? No, it works. I'm just not sure if it actually transmits anything outside of the ship. Hmm. Hey Ace, look! There's a Big ass rat trap over there. I told you that's a telegraph key. It is the way that transmits messages through Morse code. Oh boy. A telegraph key, there's no cheese on it, unfortunately. The cable that comes out of this thing is connected to the desk. What does that mean? Hey, look! It's a model of a steam train. <sighs> How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? Hey, look! It's a monkey with glasses! How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? At that point, I'd just start ignoring him. Ooh. Small screwdrivers. Ink. There's nothing in the drawer. Uh, let's search those items just to be sure there's nothing we're missing. A bottle, a bottle of ink, it's filled with ink. Hmm, a set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we can use them to dismantle small devices. A music box. Could you wind it for us, Junpei? Sounds rather odd. Hmm, what's this? The pins on the cylinder look rather strange. 
In fact, these don't look like pins at all. It looks like some sort of board. We'll need to dismantle it to get a better look. Alright, well then, let's combine this and this. Alright, this screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. It looks to be a cylinder for a music box. There are a number of pins and some sort of metal that looks rather like fans attached to it. Uh, if you... S okay. Uh, an old telegraph machine. I'll be honest, I have no idea how this works. Nothing suspicious here. And that's the captain's room. Um, or is this it? Yeah. So now what? There's nothing on the monitor, just static. Hey, isn't the door on that screen the one right behind us? You're right. So whatever that camera sees is sent to the screen in real time. I wonder if that means something, you know? Hmm. Actually, speaking of which, I don't think we examined the uh, machine on it. We'll take a look at that. It's a little rectangular hole. I think it's a keyhole for some sort of some sort. With the right key, I should be able to unlock it. Okay. The plaque on the wall, but it doesn't say anything. Oh, can we use the ink on it? Maybe. Hmm. Huh. Nothing on the lamp, I think. Can this a note? And the camera didn't give us much. If I put my hand here in front of it, it shows up in the middle top screen back there. You've got a short lifeline, Junpei. Hey, mind your own business, then. <laughs> And we can't look at that window. Huh. So wait, what do we got with us? We've got paper. We've got cylinder. We've got ink. Oh, can we like... Maybe there's like a code here or something and we can roll it out on the paper? Um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder? Yeah, and then we combine this and this. Now I just gotta roll the cylinder across a piece of paper. And if I'm right, the ink should... Hell yeah. Just as you suspected, right? Now you have a pattern of dots and lines on the paper. I imagine it's Morse code. These dots lines are the dots and dashes of Morse code. Okay, so while we have that, let's examine... Nah. How do we get... To... There we go. Alright, I've got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen. Uh, I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. Oh, do I have to... That's the last one, and... Yes! Excellent work, Junpei. 
You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. A red file lay in the drawer. Junpei reached down and picked it up. Hmm. Looks like there's something on the cover. A L L I C E. All ice. Alice. Does this mean? Junpei couldn't hold back. He had to know what was in that file. Each page was covered with strange characters. They looked like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. Hieroglyphics, Junpei. There were many pages in the file, and each was full of these strange symbols. What the hell is this? He didn't realize he'd spoken out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think I could? What the hell? Junpei flipped through a few more pages. It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Whoa, the, the whole thing's like that. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made to close the file, and something fell out. Huh? What's this? He bent down and picked it up. Oh, a, a keycard. There was a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbols for Saturn and Mercury keycards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. Something's written on the bottom. Bottom deck library. This must be the key to the library, then. So it would seem. Bottom deck library. Oh. Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Seven said something. Alice, Alice sleeps, sleeps in a small, small chamber, chamber past, past the forest, forest of knowledge, knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. Could beneath the navel mean the bottom deck, and the forest of knowledge is the library? Then could Alice be in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Something on your mind? Junpei blinked. Only then did he notice Ace looking at him. Curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? Well, don't laugh, okay? There was no reason for Junpei to hide his thoughts. He began to explain his theory to Ace. Then he stopped. It wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was to supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June had told him. The Egyptian priestess and Ice Nine. Interesting. And the woman who wouldn't melt, who was recovered from the Titanic disaster? They called her All Ice, which eventually turned into Alice. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he hid Alice. And you think that he hid her in a small room, beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah. W well, I mean, it is just a theory. Hmm. Ace stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absent-mindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He turned slowly to look at Junpei, and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term CAS? CAS? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. 
Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is super cool using magnetic fields, and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. Oh, all good, I'm sure. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation, cryogenic freezing. It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. That's when Junpei understood what Ace was suggesting. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Ace looked at him and raised an eyebrow. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice-9 does indeed exist, and Cass were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice-9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature... <laughs> That's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? I mean, that's that's certainly where my brain would just immediately jump to. Frozen Mummy was the one who killed her. Yep, sounds logical. Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly. But if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? Junpei thought for a second. Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used their Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me and Jun. Then we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shallow room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. Hmm, but what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed that guy in there, and run back that fast. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? <sighs> a person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? It was Junpei's turn to raise an eyebrow. Ace drew his thumb across his lips thoughtfully. Well, this is all only one possible theory. <laughs> all ice, Alice. Is she really somewhere on the ship? Junpei had only one clue. The key in his card. Beyond the 
forest of knowledge. Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. I'll come back to this later. He gripped the key card tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. New material has been added to the file screen. Information about Alice. A file found in the communications office. It says all ice on the spine. All the pages are filled with hieroglyphics from the from ancient Egypt. Unique key. Number code. Um. Wait, what was that thing we got earlier that I was having trouble finding? Let's just get rid of these new markers. Alright, ship's log. We've already finished that. I think we've already finished with this. See how many numbers we need to input because if it's four, then we might be dealing with hex numbers again. Looks like it's got a keyhole on the bottom right. Maybe the key I got earlier. Sweet! Just had to put that key in. Now it's on. Jinpei, look! There's a minus sign on the screen. There's eight of them. That probably means we've got to put in eight digits. Do you think you can figure it out? Um. Hmm. Are they all double digits? Let me, let me. So Z, zero. Okay, base 10 is written as A in hexadecimal. So, okay, so E is 14. Let me figure this out. So add. Ugh, math. That'd be 30. I cannot math good.
Okay. So then... And... Okay. Eight digits, huh? Ones I've put... Oh, I just press the E. Alright, let's give it a shot. Maybe I should just look up a chart for the <laughs> hexadecimal stuff just to make sure I didn't fuck this up. Uh... Base 10... Oh, fuck with it. Oh wait, this is gotta be a different one because it's not showing the same. trust my math at all. Oh lord, there are so many different kinds. Okay. Here we go. Yes, it worked. Good job, Junpei. Excellent. You seem to have unlocked it. Good work, Junpei. All right. Uh, let's go. They stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit, before turning left like a great backward L. All right, let's go. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the stairway. He ran, and ran, and ran. At the end of the hallway was a door. That's the next door. He made straight for it. Wait, a piece of paper. He was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the floor. Junpei skidded to a halt. This is... He dropped down to his hands and knees and quickly tore the paper off of the floor. Map of the ship's interior for ADEC. <laughs> What's wrong? A slightly slower by virtue of his advanced age had finally caught up to Junpei. I found a map for this floor. He showed Ace what he'd snatched from the wall. He looked at it long enough to determine what it was and nodded. I see. And with that, he began running again past Junpei. Well, 
Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> I should keep this, though. Junpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace. But something stopped hey, him. Uh, where's Clover? He turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Damn it. What the hell is she up to? Junpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he'd come. As he stomped around the corner, he saw her. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hands on the doorknob. Clover! Huh? As Junpei watched, she closed it gently and quietly. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Clover had unconsciously put her hands over the pocket of her jacket, as if trying to hide something. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... a note. A note? Yeah, I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right. But Junpei wasn't going to get to see it. From the other hand end of the hall, he heard Ace's voice. Hey, Junpei, Clover, what are you two doing? Hurry up! He's getting mad. Clover shrugged. I'll show it to you later. All right? Come on, we gotta hurry. Before Junpei could protest, she was gone. Around the corner and off down the long stem of the L. Uh. A note. A note. Junpei was curious. But there was something else that bothered him. From the look of that pocket, it doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? Uh, for crying out loud. Junpei did his best to convince himself that it would make sense later and ran off after Clover. Junpei pushed through the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Just like it says on the map. It was just what he expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably realized the same thing. Ace, did he head down? He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. Oh, there he is. Look, the four others are there too. And not just Ace. Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus as well. Really? Let's join them. Junpei and Clover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached the B-deck at the same time. Jumpy! Clover! Jun's face was excited. Something had happened. That much Junpei could tell by simply looking at her. What's up? Given their situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. Jun, however, couldn't contain herself. We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door nine! What? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Seven turned and jogged off down the stairs. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. The rest followed. Jumpy! We finally made it! The relief and excitement in her voice echoed what each of them felt. Yeah, it's finally time. Junpei wasn't quite ready to believe they'd really done it. At least not just yet. Still, if everyone said it was door nine, then it probably was. We've reached the end. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins 
and he could feel his legs shaking. He was doing his best to maintain a sense of a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny that the prospect of escape was an exciting one. Something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. Is there a way? Junpei looked over at the clock. 4.30. No time to wonder about it now. Hey, Junpei! Jun! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jolted Junpei out of his reverie. Let's go, Jumpy! Man. It's seeming like we probably won't be finishing tonight after all. Ugh. Which, you know, not a terrible thing, but... <laughs> I had been expecting to. June took off down the stairs, jogging as quickly as she could. Yeah. Because we're just only now getting to the part where uh, the true end starts. Yes. Let me just switch that up. <laughs> As a group, they piled in onto the elevator and rode impatiently down to E deck. It looked familiar. There was a metal grate between the two elevators. Seven grabbed hold of it and began to talk. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left, and that took us to the other side of the grate. After yep. that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind that, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. That's right. So, in other words, you kind of did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. With that settled, Junpei looked around. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Follow me. Seven began walking down the hallway that led towards the stern. Uh. Junpei and the others broke into a jog to keep up with him. By the way, they had been walking for a while. June in silent step with Junpei when she spoke. You know, it's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Seven of us are going to door nine. What? You don't get it? Santa, Seven, and Lotus, what's their digital route? Nine. It's nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. But they didn't. Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. He said we can't leave June and the others behind. That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. Junpei felt his eyebrows knit as he considered that. Oh, don't get me wrong. Perhaps June had sensed Junpei's concern. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? Junpei was about to respond when... Seven suddenly stopped. We're here. In front of them stood a door. So, is this... Yeah. 
Junpei couldn't see Seven's face, but he could see him nod. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. It looked as though Seven was right. The door in front of them was their only choice. All right, let's get moving. He pulled open the door and walked in. <sighs> Junpei took a deep breath and followed. <sighs> it appeared they'd been telling the truth. No way. The first thing Junpei saw as he entered the room was the number. Nine. Like all the others, it was a rough thing made of red paint. The door it decorated sat on the back wall of a rectangular room. <laughs> Junpei ran up to it. The nine door. It was a large double door with a powerful styling. Something about it was almost majestic, and it made the red paint look especially garish. We're finally here. Junpei grabbed the handle and shook. It didn't budge, but then he hadn't really expected it to. The red was bolted on the wall next to the door. Its display read vacant. No doubt about it. This is door nine. <laughs> oh, finally! This is the last. Junpei felt a flood of emotion wash over him. He felt a chill down his back and his chest tightened even as the blood began to boil. There was a moment of complete silence. Junpei, look behind you. He turned around. Behind? What? Junpei could scarcely believe what he saw. Why? A door and a nine. There's another one. Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? His words came out slowly, and his brain struggled to understand what he'd seen. On shaky legs, he made his way to the second nine. It was a small door, set parallel to the door they'd come through, but in the other corner of the room. Nine. There was no mistaking the number. And if any more proof was needed, a red was bolted to the wall near the door. There's a red there, too. That means... And of course it won't open. He grabbed the handle and shook the door. Not because he expected it to open, but because he had to make sure it was real. But why? Why the hell are there two doors? It was Ace who spoke first. Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? Lotus was skeptical. I don't know about that. Unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles, but there are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. Do you really think that at the very end of the game, Zero is going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No. I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though. Hmm. Well then, that means... Yeah, both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it, Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden. But an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Junpei began to mutter to himself. So if there are two number nine doors, if we split it up right? That's not gonna work. Junpei blinked and looked up at Clover. She held out her hand. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Slightly confused, he pulled them out and handed them to her.
Look at this. Clover opened the notebook to a blank page and set it down on the desk. Everyone else gathered around her and watched as she wrote down a series of numbers. You get it? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if you split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind. Right? Yeah. Clover nodded, almost as if she were pleased with herself for solving a difficult math problem. No way. <clears throat> hmm. The room went very quiet. Silence lay across everyone like a thick, heavy blanket. No one spoke. Their faces were blank. Come to think of it. Desperate for something else to look at, Junpei turned his eyes to the room behind around him. What is this room? If we had had everyone, then we would have been able to get away. Such a shame that someone had to, uh, kill them off. A eh, Ace? The walls were covered with candles. The wavering flame made the shadows of Junpei and his companions look as though they were dancing. Two rows of wooden pews filled most of the room. It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony. But what kind? Between them was a strip of rich red carpet. The carpet ran straight through the room, ending at the door that pointed to the stern of the sh boat. All the at the other end of the carpet. Is that an altar? It was a recessed space set into the wall between the two other doors. Sitting on a raised section of the altar was a coffin. Coffin? A coffin? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. But if it wasn't, then whose body occupied it? That was as far as Junpei wanted to pursue that line of thought. He decided not to think about the coffin for the time being. At that moment, Seven spoke. There was an edge of humor to his voice, but it was forced. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? Junpei didn't understand, and he wasn't the only one. What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. Seven snatched up the notebook and began to write in it. Everyone else clustered around him, desperate for a look. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah, I am. I'll stay behind. Uh, uh... <laughs> Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? Lotus was the first to speak. That in itself was a little strange. She'd reacted much differently when Ace had volunteered. Now, I'm completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. <laughs> the rest of them began to speak all at once. 
wants it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. There's got to be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Only I'm allowed to be that. And the villain. <laughs> Finally, they quieted it down. And Junpei looked at Seven. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Seven made some noises that was somewhere between a derisive snort and a cough. Doesn't make any sense. He was doing his best to pretend they were making a foolish decision, but Junke Junpei could see the twinkling of water at the corner of Seven's eyes. Aww. That was when Santa spoke. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Until then, Junpei hadn't realized that Santa had stayed quiet for the whole discussion of Seven's fate. Something in his voice made Junpei uncomfortable. Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Santa shook his head. Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. There was a dull shine in Santa's eyes. They were cold and hard. Junpei felt himself shiver. What the hell are you? What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Pardon? Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No, those are my orders. What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. What? Three, two, one. Santa was so fast, Junpei could barely see him. When he moved, it was almost like watching a dance. His feet moving like lightning. He spun and... And he gets the gun since Ace didn't go into that room. He had June. See? I told you. His lips curled into a cruel, mocking smile. Huh? What? A shudder traveled the length of Junpei's spine. His chest froze and he could feel his breath go stale in his lungs. Nothing made sense. Junpei felt as though his head were about to explode. Santa's sudden changing attitude. Saying that he needed two more. The gun in his right hand. A revolver. Santa had grabbed June from behind and pressed what Junpei's shaken brain identified as a revolver roughly against her temple. Why? What the hell is that? Where on earth had Santa possibly found a gun? Junpei's questions roared in his mind, but his mouth refused to ask them. Seven spoke, almost as though he had sensed Junpei's confusion. The gun's from the other room. What room? One of the rooms behind door six. I should have known he was going to do this. I should have taken the gun. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it. A mixture of fury and frustration twisted Seven's face and he glared at Santa. Santa, for his part, didn't so much as flinch. The corner of his lips twitched into a slightly wider smile. <laughs> and the smile faded and he began to move. He walked backwards, dragging June with him. Before long, his back was resting against the door. On the wall next to him was a red. He put his hand on the scanner panel, quickly, then forced June to do the same. Now, time for you to start following my orders. Ace, Lotus, congratulations! I've chosen you to come with me. Put your hands in the red. That was what Santa had meant when he said he needed two more. Hey, you deaf? 
I gave you an order. Santa's eyes narrowed to slits. He glared at Ace and Lotus. Uh, they stayed, frozen like deer in the headlights of an uncommon car. Right, fine. I didn't want to waste any bullets, but you guys just don't get it. No sooner were the words out of Santa's mouth than his hand twitched, and the gun roared. A section of the floor exploded, scattering wooden splinters across the floor. A thin plume of smoke snaked out of the hole in the floor. There could be no doubt that the gun was real and worked. He really shot it? But why? Santa, why are you... Clover's voice spoke of betrayal and disbelief. What? You knew about the leaf words and the four leaf clover. Santa's cheeks twitched almost imperceptibly. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. You're lying! Shut up! Just shut up! You stupid bitch! You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? Flecks of spit flew from Santa's mouth, his face twisted with rage. Clover recoiled, her eyes wide. When she spoke, her voice was very small. Santa. He snorted, then shook his head vigorously and turned to face Ace and Lotus. All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Get over here and scan those bracelets. I don't have all day. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing's starting to go? Going senile, maybe? Uh... Ace and Lotus still didn't move. It almost seemed as if they couldn't move. June's face was pale behind Santa's arm. Her eyes were wild and her chest heaved with every quick breath, like an animal cornered by a predator. Junpei's mind worked furiously. What were they going to do? Then he realized something. There was nothing they needed to do. There was nothing to debate. June's safety was the first priority. That much was obvious. Doing as Santa had commanded meant that she would be safe from at least two threats. She wouldn't be shot, and she would leave the ship alive, along with Santa, Ace, and Lotus. There was only one thing for Junpei to do. It's the only way. He turned to Ace and Lotus. Please, go. Huh? No way. Jumpy, what are you saying? If you stay here, you're going to be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know. But you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out. Right, Seven? Uh, right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me, either. There's still something I have to take care of. No! No! You can't! Ace! Lotus! Don't come over! Don't worry about me! Please! June was almost crying. <laughs> Junpei walked around behind Ace and Lotus. He gently placed a hand on each of their shoulders Please. and pushed them towards the door. Uh. They almost stumbled, then righted themselves and took another step, and another. <laughs> they turned around and Junpei nodded. Go. Oh, all right. Fine. Ace and Lotus turned around again and walked slowly towards the door where Santa was waiting for them. After what seemed like an eternity, they stopped in front of the door marked nine. Santa smiled. All right, now let's get those hands on the scanner panel. <sighs> <sighs> What's the holdup? What, you think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. 
The rag doesn't need a person, you know? All I need is the bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. He shoved the revolver harder against June's head and she winced. Fine. A sighed defeated, and placed his hand on the scanner panel. Lotus went next. Lotus glared at Santa and slammed her hand on the scanner panel. The fourth asterisk blinked on. Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. As soon as the door opens, you'll get your ass in there. Try anything stupid, and you know what happens, right? Junpei could almost hear Lotus' teeth grind. The door slid open. Door number nine opened at last. It opened with a low, powerful rumble. A drum roll to welcome the chosen few. Good. Go. Lotus and Ace walked through the door, their eyes furious but defeated. Santa waited until they were all the way inside, then hauled himself in June across the threshold as well. Later. After exactly nine seconds, the door swung shut. The gust of air it created caused the candles on the altar to flicker and die. The room fell silent. Junpei, Clover, and Seven had been left behind. Clover looked down at her hand and traced with her finger the faint blue veins that crisscrossed them. Seven shoved his arms into the front of his overalls and scratched his stomach. No one spoke. Silence made the air feel thick and oppressive. Desperate for something, anything to occupy his mind, Junpei walked to the larger of the two nine doors. He stood in front of it and looked at the red. It read engaged. He moved to the smaller door. The red, red vacant. The digital root of the remaining people was seven. There was no possible way for them to open a door with nine on it. Junpei touched the surface of the door. June. He thought about June, about Akane Kurashiki. Was she safe? That was all that mattered to him. If she was alive... If she had escaped this horrible boat. That was what Junpei prayed for. Seven came up next to him. He pulled off his hat, scratched his head, and sighed. So, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Seven opened his mouth to respond when... A noise echoed through the room. Someone was pounding on something, vigorously. It wasn't mechanical. It was certainly human. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. What the hell is that? Shh, quiet! Clover motioned to Seven to be quiet. She put one finger to her lips and closed her eyes in concentration. The three of them listened, trying to determine where the sound was coming from. Where is it coming from? Could it be? Uh, hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for, for show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try! 
Junpain Seven grabbed hold of the coffin. They tried to get a good grip with what little purchase they could find and pulled with all their strength. Damn it! It won't even budge. There was some sort of keypad attachment to the coffin. Its purpose would not have been difficult to determine. Their eyes were almost immediately drawn to it. Uh, another one? Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. The noise wasn't stopping. In fact, it was getting louder. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. I know that. But how? Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. They couldn't even tell how many numbers the passcode needed to be. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be anything near the coffin. Clover ran to examine the pews and Seven investigated the desk, but they turned up nothing. <gasps> There's nothing here. They're not making this easy, are they? The sound still wouldn't stop. It wasn't a noise that belonged in that room. What's the passcode? What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need something. And with that, we will go ahead and end the stream right here. I think that's a good spot. So this is normally where it would have just ended if we had not gotten the safe end in all the story checks. Would have just ended with us never being able to open that coffin. But we should be able to. Ugh. I think this ended up being longer since I decided to do the third door after all. But, you know what? We made good progress. Ugh. <sighs> I am a sleepy Coco. Thank you so much to everyone who came on by. Really appreciate it. A model, please. <laughs> I really need to find a way to better position my camera. But yes, thank you so much to everyone who came on by. I hope you have a wonderful time zone wherever you are. And as always, please do take care of yourselves and each other. If you liked what you saw here, uh, you will notice that down below in the description, you've got my social medias and a Discord where I announce everything that I do when I'm streaming, what I'm streaming. Uh, we do watch-alongs as well, so if that's something that interests you, please feel free to join. Uh, the next watch-along that I will be hosting is going to be a, a uh, watch-along of the original Star Trek, which I have never seen and am very excited for. But with that said, let's see, tomorrow over on Twitch at 8 p.m. EST, I will be continuing the Anor charity reading stream, which is something that I am doing with Moon in order to raise money for the Trevor Project. Then on Monday at 8 p.m. EST, also on Twitch, it will be Ender Lilies. We'll be back to 999 on Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST here on YouTube. So. With that said, see you then. Bye-bye.